Father, we thank you for this hour. We go into your word. Let your word minister to us. Let your word teach us. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Today's message is the mind of Christ. Open your book of the book of Philippians, chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. From verse 4. Said, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of other. Don't look at what others are doing. Don't look at what others are doing. Number five, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ, if he was looking at the mind of the disciples, he would have gone astray. The mind of Christ is what I want us to look at today. What is the mind of Christ? Open your book again to the book of James. James chapter 4 verse 10. Can we read it together? Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall do what? He shall lift you up. What does it mean to have the mind of Christ? The mind of Christ is is to humble ourselves before the Lord. When you are before, when you are in standing in front of human beings, let's assume a policeman calls you and stops you, and you don't humble yourself before the policeman. What do you think the policeman will do? He will raise so many charges against you. He will raise so many charges against that person. Some policemen can even fabricate a lot of lies. To get that person to trouble. And sometimes some people get killed. And by the time they finish the report, they turn the report against that person. You saw what happened to one brother that came here the other day here. That brother from Sierra Leone. They took his children away by the social workers. When they carried the children away, a year he didn't see these children. The only boy he has among them. Two, two girls, one boy was taken away. Three children. A year after, they now called him that that boy, they saw him dead in a pool of water. That boy died. At that time, he went to the police. He went to complain. The people who took it away, they are social workers. For arguing with them alone, they said they would not allow him to see those children again. That he was not polite before them. That it may be if he has humbled himself a little bit, maybe they would have taken the children away, they would have listened. That is human judgment. It appears we human beings, we fear, we fear human beings more than God. When God's judgment comes, it's more than, it can be worse than human beings' judgment. And that is why James is saying it, that we should humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord. That is the mind of Christ. Jesus Christ said it. He said, my father sent me and I'm here to do his will. When Satan took him to the heavens, Satan wanted him to jump down that place, in a very high place. That was the time they are doing the Passover. Jesus Christ would have been very famous at that time, jumping from that top roof, but he humbled himself. Satan again asked him to command stone into bread and eat it after 40 days of fasting. Jesus Christ could do it, but he said no. Man is not meant for bread alone, but for the word of God. I come out of the mouth of God. Satan again said, look, look at the whole of this world. Bow down for me. You will become chief. I make you king of the world. He said, no. It has been written. You must not bow down for any other thing other than God. The creator of heaven and earth. Beloved, what do we learn from all these things? When we look at the apostles who work with Jesus Christ, when we look at the mind Christ has, Today we are saying in the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. If Jesus Christ has not humbled himself before God, he will have ended up like Satan. Satan was holding a very key position in heaven. The position of Satan was fantastic. He was the head of the choir in heaven. When he's playing timberry, when he's playing music, the heavens move. Ezekiel described him that he was a powerful angel. And it was very precious to God. It was beautiful. It was elegantly made. But because he, was, he didn't have the mind of Christ, 
He didn't humble himself under the mighty arm of God. There became a, became a problem in heaven. And God has to kick him out from heaven. And since God kicked him out of heaven, see, till today, there is no peace on earth. Satan has become a nuisance of the world. I've never seen somebody who will call in the name of his, if we pray and say in the name of Satan, apart from those in the secret society. I've done somebody who will say, ah, he wants to name his child after Satan. Anything bad is after Satan. But anything good is after Jesus. When you are inside a car or you are inside a road and something terrifying happens, you will say, Jesus. Isn't it? You won't say Satan. Because that name is spoiled. What does it mean to have the mind of Christ? To have the mind of Christ is to be a humble servant. To have the spirit of servanthood. Jesus Christ served God. He humbled himself to the extent that he was even washing the feet of the disciples. Peter said, look, master, you are too much for this. I will not allow you to wash my feet because you are my master. He said, look, if you don't allow me to wash your foot, you have no care in my kingdom. Ah, Peter said, no, pour the water on me. What does it mean to have the mind of Christ? To have the mind of Christ is to be spiritually minded, not to be carnal minded. Look at what was offered to Jesus Christ on a platter of gold to be the king, so that every king on earth will be under him. The gold, the diamond, everything will be under him. He said, no. What does it mean to have the, the, the mind of Christ? To have the mind of Christ is to love. In the book of John 17, he was preaching love. He was showing love. Up to the point that he went back to heaven, he showed love. How many of us today do show love to one another? I was speaking to one of my friends recently. A very senior person in the government. Somebody offended him and he said, look, I cannot forgive this person. I hired this person. I knew the extent I went to bring this person to this organization. Look at how the person has stabbed me. I said, look, he didn't stab you. He stabbed Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ will revenge for you. He said, can you forgive this type of person? Okay, listen to what Jesus Christ did. I said, do you want to have the mind of Christ? He said, yes. Okay, what mind of Christ will you have if you don't forgive? Some people offended Jesus Christ. If it is you and I, what are we going to say? Peter was one of them. He was eating with Jesus Christ. He was dining with Jesus Christ. He was saying that there's no one like you, master. Anywhere I'm going, I'm ready to die with you. But the day of trouble, when Jesus Christ needed his attention, he betrayed Jesus Christ. There are some people we call the loved ones. When Jesus Christ was going to a mountain of transfiguration, Peter was one of them that Jesus Christ took out of the 12 disciples. And out of many disciples you don't even know that are not even following him every day. He singled out three. Peter was number one. It was on the mountain of transfiguration. It was Peter that God opened his eyes. And he saw, he saw Peter, he saw Elijah. And he saw Moses, who have died many years ago. How did he know it was Peter and Moses and Elijah? Even his own father, Peter's father did not even know them. Look at how close he was to Jesus Christ. Should it be Peter that will disappoint Jesus Christ? They said, I saw you with this man, with this man, Jesus Christ. He said, no, I don't know him. I don't know what you are talking about. He denied him three times. And Jesus Christ had him. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ looked at him. I said, ah, look, Peter. Maybe that was one of the reasons why Jesus Christ was crying on the cross. Apart from the people who don't know him, he said everybody betrayed him. Everybody disappointed him. Everybody dis deserted him. Even his own family members, they deserted him. But what did, he, what did Jesus Christ do? The mind of Christ. When he resurrected, Maybe if it is me or you or somebody looking at me right now. After the resurrection, he went back to Jesus, to Peter. Jesus Christ said, he looked for Peter. The Bible said he looked for Peter. Maybe Peter was even feeling shy. Maybe Peter was even afraid of coming closer to him. Knowing what he has done, feel, feeling guilty. He went to Peter. He said, Peter, 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 how are you? Peter said, fine, sir. Do you love me, Peter? Peter said, I love you, sir. 
Are you sure? Say yes, I love you with all my heart. You love me, Peter? I say yes. Ah. Okay, feed my sheep. He now gave him the most responsible assignment. If it is you and I, we've said something. Say, Peter, before I promised that on you, I will build my church. I said the gate of hell shall not prevail over it. But because you mess up, you mess me up by the time I needed you. I will not do, build any rock on you again. No. I will not build any church on you again. Because you are a very bad man. You disappointed me. You mess up. You said you don't know me. When things were going together, you were with me. I fed you on social data. I did for you. I did this for you. I did it for you. You were with me for three years. You are the one making promise that you will do this for me. The day I needed you. Peter, of all people. Peter. You ran away. You disappointed me. Don't come near me again. Don't talk to me. Let's be realistic, beloved. Won't you say that? Because he felt the, he felt the pain. But the mind of Christ took control. And he went to Peter. And he forgave Peter. If Judas has not come, if he didn't commit suicide, and Judas was alive when Jesus Christ resurrected, because of the type of mind he has, he would have gone to, to Judas. I said, Judas, I know you mess up, oh, but let bygones be bygones. I believe you did it in the flesh. But I will pray for you now. Join Peter to walk to build my kingdom. Jesus Christ will forgive him. If he can forgive a thief, an arm robber, a killer, and he said, today you'll be with me in paradise. He has that mind. This is where we Christians have missed it. We criticize one another. We criticize too much. We see the problem in others. We see the problem in other churches. We see the problem in other, other persons. But in our own problem, our own, our, we don't see the problem within ourselves. Jesus Christ said, before you remove the speck on other people's eyes, remove your own speck. What does it mean to have the mind of Christ, beloved? To mind, have the mind of Christ is to have compassion. Jesus Christ said, look, if you send these people on the road, send them away like this, they will die of hunger. They will die of hunger on the road. Feed them. The disciples said, Master, what are you talking about? Thousands of people like this. Who will feed them? They were looking at it from the selfish point of view. But Jesus Christ is a selfless leader. He said, I said, feed them. He said, not, not, they have nothing here. Okay, what do you have there? He said, we have two loaves of bread and fish. Bring it out. Maybe that was reserved for their family. He said, bring it out. They brought it out and they blessed it. Today, can any one of us, if you see somebody who is, who is really lacking for food and come to you and say, please, I need food, you will say, close the door. Your friend who needs some help, he rings you telephone two, first time, two times, three times, you will change your number, telephone number, because of him. The phone is ringing, you don't pick it up. He sends you an email, you, you re, no reply. He sends messages to see you, no reply. How much have you got? What have you got? Is it house? Is it property? Is it money? Is it fame? Is it position? Have the mind of Christ with it. What does it mean to have the mind of Christ? It is to be spiritually joyful. The joy of the Lord was his strength. Jesus Christ was living in the midst of enemies. Friends don't like him. Family don't like him. Even the disciples, some of them are even fighting for him to die so that they can become Jesus Christ and become the leader. He knew, but he was joyful. The Bible said he sang in the morning. And he will go and pray to God. He will go and worship God. He carried all the disciples along. The Bible said he went about doing what? Doing good. It's enough for him to be wicked. Because he saw the wickedness in mankind. He was the greatest prophet. Before anything happens, he has seen it. He saw that some people are wicked. Though. Some people are planning to kill him. If you know that some people are planning to kill you, some members of your family are planning to kill you. If you want to perform any miracle there, will you perform it again? Let's be realistic. What does it mean to have the mind of Christ? To have the mind of Christ is to be sympathetic. Look at when the friend, his friend, Lazarus died. 
he got there. The Bible said he was crying. He cried. And before, before he got there, he told the people, he said, let us go and see our friend Lazarus and wake him up. Lazarus was sleeping. Why was he crying when he knew that he could wake Lazarus up? He was sympathetic. He had sympathy for them. Small children were coming to him. And they were, some people were driving them away. He said, do not forbid them from coming to me. Because there is the kingdom of God. Let the small children come unto me. He has mercy on them. Sympathetic on them. A woman has only the Jairus daughter. The only daughter of that widow. They were crying. They were to bury. They were going to bury, the, bury that, that, that daughter in the in the in the cemetery, mortuary. What did he say? He looked at him. He looked at them. They should bring down that corpse. They brought down the corpse, and he brought that lady back, that girl alive. That is the mind of Christ. Have you got any solution in your pocket that will solve other people's problem, and you are holding it? It's not the mind of Christ. To have the mind of Christ is to be considerate, to be sympathetic with others. Not because of what you are going to get. Jesus Christ could, did not get anything from them. You could ask them that to give me rubies. I mean, give me a lot of money. The money they were spending in those days, it was a good money. Could I say, okay, pay me this money before I resurrect this lady. Give me this amount or do this for me. But it didn't. The mind of Christ. What does it mean to have the mind of Christ? To have the mind of Christ is to be humane. Open your book to the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. I read. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. What does it mean to have the mind of Christ? Is to forbid strife. Fighting, fighting, fighting. If you're a member of this church, I implore you today, and you have grievances with somebody, and the person is a member of this church, and you are holding grievances against that person, or the person is even outside, and you're a Christian, if you want God to answer your prayer, you must have the mind of Christ. One thing that kills people is to swallow poison. And wish another person to die. Is you that has swallowed the poison that must take take of that poison. The person you are fighting with may not even care, may not even know that you are fighting with him. Maybe you are even picking bones, you are picking grievances, you are picking malice. You forget it because it's just, you have taken the pill, the bitter pill, and you want that person to go and die. It's not possible. So you must remove it from your heart and let your heart be free. What does it mean to have the mind of Christ? It's to embrace Christ's kingdom. To love Christ's kingdom. We had a program yesterday here. We were all celebrating praise and worship. And I'm very sure some people will prefer to go and dance lagu lagu because to that one. Some will prefer to go and do owambe because prefer owambe to that one. Whatever you can do, there's nothing you can do that can, that can be more than praising God. When God called the whole earth, all of us will be praising God. The angels are busy praising God. 24 hours, they are praising God. If God should take the whole earth away right now, and you can see, you will know that all of us will be praising God. Part of the program yesterday is an annual program to praise God. And I was expecting us to come and really praise God yesterday. Do we really have the mind of Christ? Before they went to that, before they went out, the Bible said Jesus Christ will praise God with his disciples. He praised God with them. Where were you yesterday? Ask yourself as you are sitting down. Do you have, really have the mind of Christ? When they say, let us praise the King of Kings, especially if you are a member of this church, and when we are singing, we are calling for praises yesterday. People were king. Yesterday was a marvelous day here. And it was a day God was distributing a lot of gifts. A lot of blessings were distributed yesterday. A lot of breakthroughs. A lot of things that are yet to manifest spiritually. And I congratulate those of you who were part of the program yesterday. 
And those of you who are supposed to be here, who means it? Say, God should forgive you in Jesus' name. There are some examples of those who have the mind of Christ. They have the mind of Christ. Even though in the midst of troubled world, people like Moses, the Bible said he was the meekest person on earth. I'm not saying he hasn't got his own areas of weakness. But God does not look at your action. He looks at the motive behind your action. Joshua and Caleb. People like Elisha. People like Ruth. People like David. People like Paul. People like Timothy. People like Epaphroditus. They have the mind of Christ. I was in the same development. We have some wicked people who have the mind of Satan. People like Miriam. People like Gehazi. People like Saul. People like Hemians. People like Alexandra. The blacksmith. Who wage war against Paul in so many ways. Those who have the mind of God, of Christ. What is the benefit? If you have the mind of Christ. You can be sure that God will elevate you. Jesus Christ will do what? He will elevate you. If you have a child. And you send this child out. My son. Or my daughter, do this. This is what I want you to do. And the child does it. And you can see the result. Definitely. Whatever the child asks from you as a father, you will do it. Or as parents. What you do it, you will do it. Sickness will have no dominion. Why are we having all these type of sicknesses all over the world today? People are dying of cancer. People are dying of so many sicknesses. This is not the, this is not the intention of God for mankind. This is not the plan of God for mankind. God says you go into the world and enjoy the world. Increase and multiply. But because people don't have the mind of Christ, a lot of things have been violated. A lot of sacrilege has been committed. Violation of spiritual laws. Violation of what? Of foundational principles that establish the heaven and earth. It has brought about a lot of problems. People travel into the moon. They travel into the stars. You don't know what they have gone to do. But we can see some of this effect of scientific development. But some of these things that has come into the, into the problem that we are facing today in the world have solution. Until we have the mind of Christ to go on our knees and ask God that God, we know that it's only you that can solve this problem. As Jesus Christ did. When it, a time came, he will go to the seaside, he will go and pray. Sometimes we go to the mountain. Sometimes we go to the wilderness. Sometimes we hide in the hideout and we pray to God. Until we can all go on our knees and have the humility of the mind of Christ. And stop beating about the bush. There can be no solution. People have been looking for a solution to some of these sicknesses. But they can't get a solution. But the solution is in the heart of God. If you all go and kneel down and have the mind of Christ to find out what is happening God, God is ready to answer us. When we human beings said, we said we want to be flying from Africa to Europe. We can't be going through Sahara Desert. In those days, they travel with a, on a very big vehicle. The tire of the vehicles are very big. It may take about three months to cross from, uh, from uh, Africa to Europe. They go through Sahara Desert. They go up the north like that, try to cross wherever they go, they go avoid the sea and before they get over here. But when they pray to God, that God, we want a solution to this problem of traveling many months. And God gave them insight. They gave, the Ragri brothers came with aeroplane. An aeroplane is now flying. Can fly all over to Europe easily. Within a few hours, you are there. And they said, okay, Lord, we want a bullet, a, a, bullet a, 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 a faster aeroplane. They had a faster one. They even went and made rocket. All these things. And some even made Hercules. Hercules, is it Hercules? How do you call it? Hercules. That can carry another airplane on its own. And as big as it is, it will fly off the ground and it's going like that. As big as the airplane is, like a house. It takes off. You think it's not, it's not going to fly. It's flying like that. And with a lot of loads inside. People are sitting inside and even eating. God gave them the wisdom. We said we need share to sit on. Uh, God said, okay, I have wood in the forest. I have tree in the forest. People prayed and they asked for wisdom. God gave them the wisdom. We can have this seat this year sitting on it. If we pray to God that God, all this cancer that is killing people, all this problem that is killing people, let us forget about our intelligence. 
Let us forget about our, our academic, our, academic garbage and intellectual trash. Let us go on our knees and have the mind of Christ and say, Father, we have missed it. You didn't create this for us. It is not our portion. We want solution. Don't you think God will give us the solution? He will give the solution and God can do it. We need to understand God. We need to understand things and have the mind of Christ. Finally, I want us to, to ask our, some questions. Uh, if you can say yes or no to these questions, it depends on how you see it. Are you self-conscious rather than Christ-conscious? Uh, is it me, 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 me that is your goal? Are you so selfish that you, you, for you to even share things with other person, you, 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 you find it difficult? Which is the problem of our leadership today? Most of the leaders we have in Africa in particular, I'm sorry to say this, they have this idea of me, 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 me first. Do you allow feeling of inferiority complex to keep you from attempting things that you should do in serving God? Do you do little in your work? Do you do little in the house of God? Do you complain? Jesus Christ never complained. The only time Jesus Christ raised a complaint was, ah, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? It, it was a question, not even a complaint. When he said, Eli, 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 my father, why have you forsaken me? It was a question that, what, why have you forsaken me, Lord? Do you complain? They give you work to do in your place of work, you complain. They give you in the house of work, out of God, you complain. If all of us in this vineyard are doing our work properly, MFM Edinburgh will have moved from minimum to maximum. But many people, some of, some of the people are not doing their job the way they should do it. We look at each other. We don't have the mind of Christ. Some of us are doing this work because we want self-recognition. Some are doing this thing we want to be popular. To see you in the church as being the person who is popular. What profit will it be if the pastor recognizes you and Jesus Christ does not recognize you? Whatever you are doing, you are not doing it for the pastor. You are not doing it for the mommy pastor. You are not doing it for the, uh, for the assembly pastor or for the church administrator. You are doing it for God. And it's only God who can reward you. All of us are running the race. Not as if we are beating the air. At the end of the day, we don't, be, we don't want to be a castaway. Do you find fault with others? Jesus Christ didn't find fault with people. Do you find fault with others? There are some people they can pick fault in you. They won't say anything good in another person. Everything negative, 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 negative. Do you have a critical attitude towards a person or thing? You enter a place, the first thing you see is the bad things there. Okay, well, how do we correct it? No solution. Are you irritable or cranky? You get irritated. People cannot even come near you. They see you as a terror. Or you think you are holier than thou. Or you think you are the best. Do you get angry? There are some people, when they get angry, they can kill. The man of Christ, he saw a lot of things that were made to be very angry. The only time Jesus Christ displayed anger was in the house of God, where people were selling, selling uh, rats, selling uh, chickens, selling uh, bats, selling birds. Can you imagine today we are having a big program here? We are having child education. And all of you just enter the church. And you know that this place, this is supposed to be a church. And you see some people, they are gambling there. Some people are selling a uh, bed there. Some are selling bath there. Some are selling uh, nonsense there. And you have the, the spirit of God in you. You will push them out for the service to hold. Do you listen to unedifying words? Are you always listening to an unedifying film or watching unedifying films? There are some people, they always watch pornographic films. They are already addicted to it. If you are like that, shout hallelujah, let me see you. If you know you watch all those dirty films, raise up your hand, let me see you. Uh, nobody will raise up their hand. I trust you, nobody is doing that here. Shout hallelujah. Do you read unworthy materials? Do you find satisfaction? In questionable things. Do you mix with wrong people? Are you always in the wrong circle of people? Maybe they are arm robbers. Maybe they are killers. You're, they always see you in the midst of people who are terrible, who are bad, 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 wicked people that in fact, police can even arrest all of you at the same time. Do you always find yourself in that place? If you have the mind of Christ, you will choose your friend. You will choose the right circle where you should be. 
Are you taken off with cares of this life? Do you ever, do you ever by word or deed, seek to hurt someone? Do you gossip? Many people are gossiping. Open your book of the book of Philippians 2, 14, quickly. Philippians chapter 2, verse 14. Philippians chapter 2. We'll soon round up now. Philippians 2, 14 says, Do all things without murmurings and disputing. Do you speak unkindly concerning people? Do you carry bitterness towards God? Do you carry bitterness towards God? Have you been dissatisfied, dissatisfied with the provision God has given to you? Do you cheat or do you steal? When they ask to do something for God, do you steal from there? In your office, do you steal the stationaries and take it home and say this is part of the reward from God? Do you have personal habits that are not pure? Do you think about the things about God or you think about things of the world? There are some people when they say, let's go to the church, the first thing they will ask that there's a program, will there be food? If there be no food, they are not going. There are some people when they say, let us fast. They say, when are we, when are we going to break the fasting? But whatever we are doing is for yourself. Jesus Christ fasted. He did everything, not because of what he was going to gain from it. So whatever you are going to do, you must have the mind of Christ. And we must not be lazy. Jesus Christ was not lazy. So for you to have the mind of Christ is to walk towards achieving the kingdom of God, the kingdom goal. Bow down your head and pray like this. See, every spiritual pipe in my life that is rusty, blood of Jesus, wash them clean. Every spiritual pipe in my life that is unclean, blood of Jesus, wash them clean. In the name of Jesus. Finally, the principles to have the mind of Christ. Number one, let your mind be open to Holy Spirit. There's no way Holy Spirit will come to you if you are the type. You always hear this music. G, 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 beam. G, 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 beam. In your car. G, 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 beam, beam. In your home. G, 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 beam, beam. You won't allow the Holy Spirit to talk to you. Everything is beam. No meaning. No meaning. I saw somebody. I was in Newcastle. We went for one deliverance program. One deliverance crew. I saw them in one pub. Uh-uh. The way they was jumping there. Ah, uh-uh. oh my God! And there was, somebody was drunk, and the, the, about four people were trying to carry the person. Until police came and started helping them, they were fighting there and breaking bottles there. We had to run away from that place. And when you ask them, they, are, they said they are having fun. Holy Spirit can never be in such a place. You must expect great satisfaction in whatever you are doing for God. Whether the pastor recognizes you or the church recognizes you, you must expect satisfaction from God, not from human beings. Even in your workplace, expect that your satisfaction will come from God. Until God provides a new job for you, you need to be loyal to that job you are doing. Do God's will and finish his work. John chapter 4 verse 34. Do God's will and finish his work. When we ask you, for the past few months, we've been asking people to support us in some program in the church. We've been saying support us, support us, support us, support us. Some people are not ready to support us. We bought a, we bought a, new, a new bus. I thank God for those who contributed towards that bus. The bus is, is there. And that is recorded in your favor. The mind of Christ. We said we wanted to buy some equipment, some gadgets. I know some people put some money to buy those gadgets. God has recorded it in your favor. We were to have a fire conference. We needed some help. Some people supported. Some did not even support. The fire conference was successful. God has recorded it in your favor. Yesterday, look at it. We bought this new equipment yesterday. 3,400, 3,200. The new Yamaha Tyros 5. We said we needed some people to contribute money to help us. Some might say, ah, after a pastor has money, why can't he put his money down? Some say, after the church has money, why can't the can't church buy it? Some people put in money down. Somebody even put in a lot of money down there. And God has recorded it. Those who put their money down to buy this thing, God has recorded it in their favor. The question is, have you got the mind of Christ? 
When God start rewarding them now, you start discovering that, oh, what happened to you? Why are you not getting the reward? Why is God not answering your prayer? No, God is answering your prayer in the way you have sown. Whatever you throw to the world is what comes back to you. What do you to get the mind of Christ? You must know that now is the time. Don't defy it tomorrow. Don't say tomorrow I will give my life to Christ. Next tomorrow I give my life to Christ. In two weeks time I give my life to Christ. What must you do? You must have vision for it. You must have vision that there is a race you are running in this world. And one day God will call you. And when God calls you, what will you say to God? There are some people who don't come to church. If they pass away today, what they will say about them will be very good. What will they say about all of us that are here today? If God should call anyone today, have you got the mind of Christ? Pardon down your head and pray like this. Say, oh Lord, give me the mind of Christ that will silence the devil in the name of Jesus. Say, oh Lord, give me the mind of Christ that will silence the devil in Jesus' name we are praying. Pray fervently and fast regularly. Sometimes you want to serve God, then we come with so many devices. I want to do good things, so I want to do good things, so I want to do this, so. But when devil comes, you will forget it that you have promised to do good things. That is why I will fight the flesh, and that is why we two pastors we say pray for us too. We are human beings, not to talk of people who are not even pastors. We face a lot of attack, a lot of temptations, more than you people, and God, is, God will help us in Jesus' name. Say, I die to live. I live to die. The more I die, the more I live. In the name of Jesus. Do not give up so soon on anything. Do not give up so soon. When you see the way life is going, if Jesus Christ has given up today, we will not be singing that song. He is the king of king. He is the Lord of Lord. His name is Jesus. 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 How can he become the king of all kings if he failed? How can we kneel down in his name if he failed? How can we say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind you, I cast you out, if Jesus Christ has failed? He said, in my name, every knee must bow. I gave you an example. I was on the plane. There was this beautiful lady, she sat near me. When they said, who put a, uh, I put my file there, my, one of my handbag. The way she, the way she fling that bag. I said, it's my bag. I didn't know you are coming to. I didn't know somebody was coming to sit down here. Let me take my bag. She already flinged it to the other side of the. So I had to call the hair hostess to come and bring my bag for me. He brought the bag, put it on top for me. I was praying. She was looking at me. Before the plane took off, I was praying. She was looking at me like this. When the plane now took off, after some time, about one hour or two hours, we ran into a big storm. The plane would just do. She now said, Jesus. She held my hand. Jesus. Uh, it's not, it's not, you know that somebody who, who knows Jesus is beside you here. It's good to have the mind of Christ. Rest up on your feet, beloved. Rest up on your feet. Rest up on your feet. I have no power of my own. I have no. I have no power of my own. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I look up to you, help me, I have no power of my own, I have no, I have no power of my own, I have no, I have no. I